Yeah, hi folks. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I've had a gutful of the never-ending bitching and whining coming from our Maori radicals, instead of joining the rest of New Zealand in one united country, they keep on regressing to their racist, separatist worldview. And mark my words, their attack on David Seymour's principles bills is solely about losing their grip on their co-governance gravy train. Now, I think uh, David Seymour deserves a lot of respect for what he's doing. Look, I want to start this interview by going through what I think are some of the perpetual, well, the perpetual disinformation which surrounds the Treaty Principles Bill. Um, the first one is, and I have seen journalists repeat this, and I have seen academics repeat this, and politicians opposed to you repeat this, that you are seeking to rewrite the Treaty of Waitangi. That is what this bill does. Can you speak to that claim? Well, I'm very happy to. Uh, we have no intention of rewriting uh, the Treaty of Waitangi, the English version, or Te Tariti, or Waitangi, the Maori version. Those texts uh, are 184 years old um, on Tuesday, and they will remain uh, just as they are. Uh, what we're interested in doing is continuing a process that actually has been going on for 40 years, and that is defining what these principles of the treaty are. Now, you've got to back up a little bit. What are they? Uh, well, they come out of legislation going through parliaments in the 80s that said uh, the government must follow the principles. The problem was parliament passed that law. Parliament has never said anything about what the principles are. And over the past 40 years, a combination of the courts, the Waitangi Tribunal, the public service have all developed their view uh, of what the principles of the treaty are. Yeah, so they're all made up. Um, but you'll notice that <coughs> there's never been a, a proper debate in Parliament. Uh, there's never been a proper debate that most people uh, can be engaged in. So people say, oh, you know, we're trying to change the principles. Well, actually... Uh, everyone's been trying to change the principles except for the overwhelming majority of New Zealanders for the last 40 years. Uh, and what we're doing is bringing everybody in uh, to say, OK, well, if, if these principles are the way we look at the treaty from the present day, uh, then what are those principles? Are those principles, as currently interpreted by the Crown, are they written down anywhere, substantively, definitively? Yeah, they are. I mean, um, the, the government, the long government in 1989 uh, set out a, a set of principles. Um, the court in 1987, what they called the Lands case, um, made some commentary on what the principles should be. That was the, the, the first time that they were really set out. And here they are. Some of the treaty principles identified in the 1987 Lands case were the duty to act responsibly and in good faith, the act, active, ground, active crown protection of Maori interests, the government should make informed decisions, the crown should remedy past grievances, and the crown has a right to govern. Now folks have uh, posted a, a link to this below. Um, and over that time, you've seen people like the Waitangi Tribunal try to further develop them. Under the current Treaty of Waitangi Act, it's left to the, the Waitangi Tribunal to interpret the principles and ensure uh, that the government of the day sticks to them. Uh, and they are basically that the government has uh, a duty of partnership um, and of active protection um, of Māori. And the issue with that that we see is that it's upholding ideas that people should have rights and dignities, but only for Māori. And we just make the point that uh, the government should have those kinds of obligations to all New Zealanders. Exactly. If it has those obligations only to Māori, there are a couple of issues. One is uh, which people exactly, because there's about three quarters of a million people who fuck a papa, say that they're 
Māori and their ancestry, um, but they all have a lot of other ancestry too, so it's not obvious you know, where you draw the line. Uh, and the second issue is, uh, if you can solve the first problem, you've still got a bigger one, which is, okay, so how is a country supposed to work uh, when there are two sets of political and legal rights, and some people will get consulted on land use development because of their ancestry. Uh, some people will get positions such as the Māori co-CEO of the Human Rights Commission. Some people will would have at least sat on the uh, Three Waters representation boards. Um, it, it's not a very good blueprint for a country. Most countries mm. try. So that's the first the, principle. What are the others people. that you think need debating? Uh, well, the rest of them I don't actually think are too bad. I mean, the, the, the Longy principle also said that the government has the right to govern. Um, we would actually say that that should be put in place. Um, they also said that there should be equality before the law. We think that that should stay. Um, it's this idea that there is a partnership between the Crown and Māori that gives some people a different set of political and legal rights to participate in public life. Um, that are the which is the principle that, which, which underpins co-governance, right? Well, co-governance, as it's appeared under the Labor government, is, is just the logical extension of that partnership idea. All right. So this is, we have narrowed this down to what the issue that you have, and I would argue, given the election result many New Zealanders have, with the principles of the treaty. For those who are not deep into this, what does your bill therefore propose as regards what you consider that contentious treaty principle? So my bill takes uh, the, the literal reading of the Māori text and it says in three articles, the treaty says uh, that the government has the right to govern, uh, that we all have uh, self-determination or te rauranga te rautanga over our individual sovereignty and our property and so on, um, and that we all have the same rights and duties, again, from the treaty, Nga Tikanga Katoa Rita Taki. So, I mean, we are taking exactly what the Māori version says and saying these are the principles. The government has the right to govern. We all have the right to self-determination in our lives, and we all have the same rights and duties. But partnership would go. We don't believe that the treaty is a partnership between races. That should be gone. That is something that emerged in the 1980s. Uh, it was not part of the treaty. Exactly. That partnership BS was manufactured in the so-called Principles Treaty, which appears to be governing New Zealand these days. Now, folks, as you listen to the following, take note of how David speaks in a calm, reasoned way. And what he says resonates. Now, you may have heard all sorts of things about the treaty principles and what a terrible thing it is and how it's somehow an attack on Māori and all things Māori. I'm here to tell you that's not true. And if you want to believe what other people are saying about me, at least ask, what am I saying uh, before you judge? I have a very simple belief that each of us individuals and human beings are united by something much greater than any kind of history or culture that is universal humanity the same rights the same dignities for being human and that is what has driven all the good movements in human history votes for everybody equal rights above race civil rights movements in america and the end of apartheid in South Africa, along with the rights of people of different sexualities to be themselves and marry as they would like to be. That's what I believe. And when it comes to the Treaty of Waitangi, we as a country have a simple choice to make. We can either believe that the Treaty of Waitangi created a partnership between races, as some people have said, or we can believe that it delivers, as it says itself in the Māori version, the same rights and duties. That is the fundamental question. If you believe that the treaty is a partnership between races, then you have to believe that tangata whenua have different rights and duties in New Zealand from tangata tiriti, 
And that means people get different positions in government. They get treated differently in the workplace. They get treated differently based on who their ancestors were, not what they do today and the character of their own behavior. Or you can believe that we are all equal and that each of us, some advantage, some disadvantage, some of us very clever, other of us not, should all have a chance and choice in life to be the best that we can. My belief is that the latter way is the only way forward for any society. Every time we say that people have different rights based on ancestry, we re breed resentment. And more importantly, we create the idea that which group you're a member of is more important than your basic value as a person. All the really bad things that have happened in history have come from that basic way of thinking, group first, individual value second. What we're asking for is a proper debate on the treaty, and our treaty principles bill would be a law passed by Parliament that says, you know what, the treaty says what it means and means what it says. We take the Maori text and we take what it literally says, that the government has the right to govern. There is one government. I know there's people who say we didn't cede sovereignty. The reality is there's five million of us on these islands and we do need one government. That's the first article, Ture or Law. Uh, the second article, or Ture, says that we have the right to tiraranga tiratanga, self-determination. Now, some people say that only applies to Māori. I don't see why that wouldn't apply to everybody for a number of reasons. One, as I said, we're all human. Two, many people who are Māori also are proud of many other whakapapa from around the world. So it seems crazy to try and divide the right to self-determination and property to only apply to some citizens. We believe that should apply to all. And that's backed up by the third law, o Ture, which says that we have na tikanga katoa rite tahi, the same rights and duties. Parliament would legislate that those are the principles. And that means that we are not a partnership between races. We're not people who have to look at our family tree to find out how we fit in. We're all New Zealanders with the same basic rights. And with that platform constitutionally, we can get stuck in to tackling the real problems and challenges that New Zealanders face. How do we get more kids to school? I'm from the far north. People not going to school is a ticking time bomb and an 80-year disaster as these people try and go through life without the basic skills to navigate the 21st century. How do we make the streets safe? What we're doing in justice clearly isn't working. How do we close gaps in healthcare? We need to be smarter and more innovative in the way we deliver it, especially as the population ages and new medical technologies are invented with greater cost. How do we make sure that everybody has a whare? We are at least 50,000 houses short in this country. It's too hard to build the roads. Just today, I heard it cost half a million dollars to build a pedestrian crossing. No wonder it's expensive to build a road, and no wonder it's hard to buy a section that is connected to opportunity, meaning jobs and education for the next generation and a place they can own themselves. Those are the sorts of challenges I want to get stuck in and solve, but it requires unity or kotahitanga, and that requires an understanding of the treaty that it gives the same rights and duties to all. That is a way forward. So next time you hear somebody say something about me or my bill or what we're bringing to the table that sounds a little bit crazy, just come back and say, what is coming from the horse's mouth, so to speak? These are the facts. These are my intentions. This is what is in my manawa. This is where we want to take New Zealand to a more united and prosperous future that actually has a tighter reference to Te Tiriti or Waitangi than what anyone else is talking about. And now to the diversity, equity and inclusion people at TVNZ and their take on this story. 53% male, 47% female, two staff identified as non-specific. Women represent 47% of our total workforce, 60% 60, 60 of our business leaders, 60% of our executive team and 58% of our board. He's like a little prick. 
and uh, we've, you know, he, he's pricked us into action, and we should do so with goodwill. We should do so with goodwill, he says, after calling David a prick. I think what I saw today is actually 11 issues uh, put down um, and actually the, the Treaty Principles uh, Bill made up half of one of those issues. Um, so I think probably I'm being a little bit overblamed. The blame game not over yet with the fight only just getting underway. Mikey, an unexpected welcome perhaps for David Seymour there. What's that all about? Well, while political positions are at complete loggerheads when it comes to the treaty debate, whakapapa is not. In te ao Māori, whakapapa is sacrosanct. And that's what makes this political debate different from past years. David Seymour, Winston Peters, Shane Jones, all of those political leaders heavily involved in this debate, all of them have Māori lineage and all of them whakapapa right here to the north. So that's why we're seeing the blurring of the lines at times like we did today. That being said, make no mistake, the 11-point pledge by Iwi today drew a deep line in the sand here at Waitangi. Issues like wanting to scrap the Māori Health Authority, Māori wards, dismantle the Waitangi Tribunal, introduce seabed mining and also make changes to the Oranga Tamariki Act, all of those are issues the government can expect a big scrap on with Iwi over the next three years and there'll be no hiding behind whakapapa on that. And there'll be no hiding behind whakapapa on that. Tēnākwe, Mikey, thank you. Māori in the far north are on a 200-kilometre journey to Waitangi and what's expected to grow into the biggest hikoi in 40 years. Organisers say many felt compelled to make a stand against the government. Our Māori affairs correspondent, Te Aniwa Huri Hanganui, has the story. The protest cries Māori know all too well. We will keep fighting, they say, for as long as it takes. I'm doing it for my mokos, my uri pakatipu, the generations to come. I want to let them know that there is a future for them here in Aotearoa, a future of self-determination. From the top of the North Island to Waitangi, there's a five-day journey ahead of them. Running, walking, on horses, on, on the waka, just everybody is coming to Waitangi to share their aroha, share their kaha. They're not the only group departing today. Multiple hikoi across Northland are taking place from Te Rerenga Wairua, Te Kao, Taipa, Ahipara, Mangamuka, Panguru and Hokianga. They'll join together at Kawiti Marae on Sunday. It's going to be probably the biggest hikoi in 40 years. This hikoi is really just an embodiment of the kōrero, that we never ceded sovereignty. But you did cede sovereignty. And this is where their journey will end on Tuesday, the Waitangi Treaty Grounds. The hikoi isn't seen as a separate part of the whole Waitangi event at the moment. We've put it on the official agenda. <coughs> ben Dalton was once a driving force behind the hikoi to Waitangi. It would have been well into the late 80s or early 90s before we were allowed onto not only this place but onto the marae. But in recent years, fewer people have taken part and Waitangi has been relatively calm. Some believe that's all about to change as tension over the government's policies continues to rise. It's a direct stab, some of the um, proposals and some of the things, the actions that they're doing, to Māori, like just to Māori. Well, who else is screwing New Zealand? It's making us all very angry because we feel like we're the political rugby ball on the field all the time, constantly. Now they're taking a stand, hoping this message will finally cut through. Yeah, now folks, I don't agree with everything David Seymour says, but on this one, he's got it right. Anyway, folks, I've posted all the relevant links below, along with all the uh, Stopco government's links as well.